It's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you. Merry Christmas. We're here on the 9th of December, and uh, we've got a special presentation, a review of the British Mini Tape Recorder. And I always called these, when I was a kid, they called them British Minis. And uh, I don't really know if they're British many, so if anyone wants to leave a comment, or they're, it says made in Japan on the back of them. But so many companies back then, including the ones over here, uh, would have stuff made in Japan, and it would actually be U.S. or British or somebody else, but it was manufactured in Japan, a lot like they do with China today. But this was a popular little tape recorder of the 1960s. It's a uh, double motor and uh, it's rim drive and uh, it only has jack on it and that's the remote mic and as we'll get into here later uh, in the cleanup and uh, video we'll show you the insides of it and the layout of the motors this basically uh, it's already been cleaned so I'm going in reverse I've already cleaned this and the next part of the video you're gonna see is some of the cleanup and you'll see you know inside the back and stuff uh, as it goes right now, this is a cleanup and review. In the future, we will have an operational, you know, reconditioning, uh, whatever is needed, and uh, then a operational test, so on and so forth. But for right now, we're just giving a good review and, uh, you, know, you know, stuff like that. So this unit operates, the amplifier operates off a 1-9 volt transistor battery, and it has three C cells to, to run the drive units. And like I said, this is a dual motor. There's one on each cap. And uh, that's kind of amazing because back then it seemed like they were told to keep the parts count down. And all the rest of, most of the rest of the smaller ones had a single motor. And this is kind of a, kind of a higher quality. This is Hilt. And, uh, but it does strictly run on batteries. It's just got the one jack for the remote mic. And... Uh, Right there, as you'll see later, uh, that's how you get into it. The whole back removes. You can see the PCB board, everything if it needed. These were made for service. So you could get to the electronics real easy. And it's uh, if you need to get to the other side, which we won't do on this video, but these screws here, you can uh, see. I don't know if I had a remover or not. See if, see if I can. I had a time getting this off. Okay, here we go. Okay, these screws here. Once you get the back of it off, these screws here can be removed and your whole uh, transport will drop down. And we'll do that. We'll oil it and everything. Uh, looking at the rubber on the drive, it doesn't look like it's going to have to have anything. And you don't want to recondition rubber that is good, no matter how old it is. It's good and soft and pliable. You know, so. But anyway, uh, I thought this was a neat little unit to do a review on. And I just thought I would offer it to uh, people that are interested in this stuff and as I always say on my uh, videos the main thing here is to give people a working idea of what's inside of them and what they're about and so if they buy one uh, they've got an idea of what it's going to be the recondition or repair or whatever or just for that one when they were kids and want to look back or maybe had one and never took it apart or something like that so anyway uh, please let me know in the comments uh, if these were really British, I always called them British minis when I was a kid. And uh, anyway, I uh, appreciate you watching. And we're going to switch over now to the uh, cleanup and just exterior inspection and case cleanup and stuff like that. And this, I just reeked of cigarette smoke when I got it. It, it It's still, I get whiffs of cigarette smoke. And... Uh, you just got to keep working with them, wiping them down with a good cleaner like Windex or something like that, and you'll eventually kill all the cigarette smoke. So I've said too much, so we're going to shift you over now to the cleanup and the reconditioning video. We're going to 
start the cleaning process here and when i first took this out of the box i heard some rattling and stuff but i think we're okay i was a little concerned there that you know we may have some damage this uh this mini has been around somebody that has heavy smoked and you can just it just reeks of cigarette smell cigarette smell and ashes and just different just different things but all in all it it i think it's going to clean up pretty good it's just going to take a little bit of elbow grease now here's something rattling it's inside we'll get to that later some scuff damage looks like there's been some damage back here on this part of the case it's either scuff or glue I don't know which I don't know get some of the dark out of that I think it's glue and I don't think it's cracked. I think it's just glue that's been on the side of it. It's still this, the spinach are scuffing. It still looks like it's in relatively good shape. And this one, uh, these were strictly bat battery powered and uh, they just had a mic and uh, let's see they had a mic it was all they had they didn't have uh, an ear they didn't this is this is uh you know on off mic a uh, remote mic and uh they had as you can see there's no other jacks but that uh they were all batteries and uh kind of self-contained This may get a little boring, but I'm going to rub on this thing for a while and try to clean it up. It's got a stubborn stain of glue on the handle. Now, I'm not real sure what vintage these are in the 60s, somewhere around the night time period. And uh, some people have told me, and, and somebody in the comments section can point that out, somebody had told me these were British. And uh, it says made in Japan on the back of it, but back in those days, back in the days when this was new, See, you can see this. You can see the cigarette gum on there. Cigarette gum. And I've got to clean the dust, the dust cover here accordingly in a while. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying, somebody. I'm going to use the styrofoam that came with it to lay it on. And there is on that styrofoam, you can just see cigarette smoke. It has been around, even the box and everything has been around somebody that was a smoker. Nicotine tire man or whatever. Ooh, and man, I mean, you can, it just reeks of cigarette. And we'll try to, eventually we'll get that off of there. And for the batteries and stuff, screw in the center, the whole back comes off. And uh, if I remember right, uh, it's, there's, there, it's, you can get to all the mechanism and everything for service. This is really a cool deal on Anyway, if anybody out there knows whether these were really made in Britain or not, drop me a, a line on the comment section because I'd like to know. And I, what I was going to say about Japan, it says right here, made in Japan. Let me be sure 
my 2040 side let me be sure here made in japan i'm trying to see if there's any kind of a date code on there here's some numbers made in it's it looks like two that'd be february and i i don't know the uh, it doesn't show the last part of the date but uh what I was going to say is a lot of companies around the world, as well as the ones here in the U.S., a lot of the stuff was either designed here and put together in Japan or totally manufactured in Japan and designed for, for uh, companies. So it's possible. If anybody knows, tell me, was many a company or was many a brand name or what? Um, and I got this off of eBay. It's been almost seven years ago, and it's never been opened. And uh, but it, I think it's in pretty great shape, for except some scratch and scuff damage there. But uh, it has just been filled with smoke. And you know the heads are covered. If the case is covered like this, even though the dust cover was on it, that smoke infiltrates like nothing you would believe. So you know, without it, you know. That the, that the uh, inner workings and the tape head here is, uh, and I can see dirt on it on the back there, but the tape head needs cleaning. For sure, I know it is. So. But anyway, and there is something rattling in, inside of it, if you can hear it. Hear that? So that may be something serious. I don't know. We'll, we'll find that out here in just a while. But I want to, before I start messing with it, I want to get the case all white on and uh, get the cigarette and tire and nicotine off of it. I never did see how anybody could smoke those things. Those things are just a killer. They're even a killer to a bit like this. They sure are. We're kind of pretty, pretty it up a little bit now. It's going to take another wipe down or two to totally, it's still showing yellow. It's going to take another wipe down or two to really get that crap off of it. Man, it is it is kind of a, it's not the little machine, but what it's supposed to, it is kind of a sickening smell. It just uh, kind of gags you, you know. It smells like you're smoking them. It's, it, it's so bad that it smells like it's smoke. So bad. And that speaker cloth could be pure white. If you look at that, this should be pure white. I might be able to remove the speaker and clean that some way. We're not going to do that on this one. Miraculously, the volume control looks fairly clean. This is just the preliminary cleaning of the case. And we'll go over all that. I'm just getting the worst of it here. Because it's bad. Okay. I'm going to flip this over. For now, we'll see if we can take a look at the inner work. See if I've got something here that uh, a dime would do it. <laughs> see if I've got a screwdriver or something here that will open that. Try another one here. I got a Phillips head. Here's a, here we go. This is what these were made for. Here's a nickel. And that's what these were made for, I think. The, see, a nickel fits in there real good. And these were made to, because uh, the batteries are in there, if you're out in the field somewhere, these were made to put in with, you know, like a penny or nickel or a dime, something like that. You don't see so many of these kind of screws anymore. And I'll show them to you here in a minute. They were definitely, they're definitely not security screws. <laughs> there you go. Okay, here's the, it's just, you can just put a nickel, dime, or penny in there. These were popular in the 60s. Uh, that, you know, for, you know, if you were out in the field somewhere, why, you know, you could use change or something, or anything you happen to have. Maybe a pocket and I have, oh, the inside of it looks a lot better than the outside. And, uh. Kind of turn it up and see it's it's got cigarette mats, but it there's how clean it could 
Yep, that's all cigarette. That is all cigarette stain. If you look right up here, if if you look right up here, if you look right up here, you can see that's how that's the color it should be. It's really neat. It's it's a double motor system, and uh, it runs on. Uh, let's see here. UM2 flashlight batteries, which that is C batteries. That would be it runs C batteries. And this is the, I think this is the more modern version. And I've seen one or two on there that Clyde Sight had, and they had bigger motors or something. This is the more modern version for sure. But it's not in bad shape if we can, without messing the originality of it up. Let's see if we can clean some of this and get some of that off of there. Oh, yeah, it's just pure nicotine. There ain't nothing like cigarette to get in, and gosh, you can even oil these motors. That is cool. These are serviceable, mo serviceable motors. I'll never forget the, the, the uh, 60s and the 70s, especially the uh, 60s. Everything was serviceable, and uh, you could keep it as long as you like. You could use it and not have to worry about not being able to get it repaired or having to buy a new one or... You know, keeping the use down on it or something where, you know, where you wouldn't wear it out because you'd have to buy a whole new unit. You, you could, uh, there was parts. You could fix them. And like these, they may not have made any repair parts in the factory, but the parts that they're made out of in the 60s, little motors and all that stuff, even these little springs, they were all available. I mean, you know, that's, that was just common stock in the electronics industry and you know just for the mechanical industry all you know it was just on hand and uh, available where today you get so much stuff it doesn't even have a name on it you don't even know who the hell made it pardon the language and uh, you know find a part or something for it you know like that unless you just happen to stumble uh, against the part but it uh, this one looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, even the, if you look, even the battery packs are a, uh, uh, oh, it uses a 9-volt battery for the uh, amplifier. I didn't catch that. uses three Cs and one 9-volt battery for the amplifier. Yeah, and I'll have some batteries for that. But there's still something rattling in it. You hear that? And it's, it's in between the panel here and the main. Let's see if we can shake it out. There it was. It just fell out, whatever it was. Looked like a screw. And I don't know where it went. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. It's a screw. And I don't think it's anything that mounts it. I even see where it goes. It goes right there. It's a screw that goes right there. looks like it was stripped out is what it was that's why somebody probably has probably been in it but nonetheless it looks good the the PCB board looks like new that looks like new stuttering and everything if the capacitors aren't bad boy we're in business but it sure does smell like cigarettes but on these contacts I tell you the best thing to clean them with you can take a little alcohol and you'd think that alcohol would corrode that or no I'm scared sorry a little vinegar I'm so used to saying alcohol for cleaning things you can use a little vinegar on these spring contacts or these battery contacts and especially if they're corroded and you'd think the acid and vinegar would make them it will take all that battery vinegar will take all that battery corrosion off and everything you can if you got patience you can usually salvage your battery contacts if they're badly corroded and they'll look like new and that's better than a lot of these other I've seen even heard of people trying something like baking soda on them to to uh, you know remove that but all you need is vinegar and a little q-tip swab and I'm, I hope I don't break any of these wires to clean this thing out and I thought maybe it would have a schematic with it but I don't think it does I'm trying to get this really cleaned up here so I'm a little beyond my call of duty here. The motors, for some reason, they stayed shiny. 
and that's a good thing because they're the most delicate. See, they're on these little float mounts. And that's the most delicate to be putting pressure on to try to clean. And I think I'm going to about call this a day here in just a little bit. But all these little recorders, they were told, I, it's my opinion, they were told, the, the engineers that made these, they were told to keep the part down, the part count down to so low. And most of them only have, and the one that Clyde side has, his has like a mechanism that goes across. This probably, it's on the other side if you take it apart. And uh, when I we're gonna do another video when we should see if it'll play and everything. Right now uh, we're just doing the preliminary the preliminaries on it, you know, kind of getting it ready and that sort of thing. But it's it's clean. It takes a little elbow grease, and these are fairly these are fairly well built. In fact, they may built be built just a little bit heavier than the little Mayfairs. These are fairly well built. If I had a set of batteries, we'd stick them in and try it. Okay, for now, I'm going to wipe this cover down on the back a little bit. Get it kind of cleaned up. Okay, YouTube, that concludes the uh, review on the uh, mini, uh, the 1960s mini tape recorder. And I'm going to do two other videos, one on the Mayfair 1602 operation and play back on this one. And uh, if I can do it, it'll be sometime right at Christmas Day or sometime uh, after it, maybe into January a little bit. And, uh, but... Uh, we'll get back to them, and uh, we'll we'll get by and we'll uh, recon we'll do some reconditioning on them. So for now, we'll catch you later, YouTube.